Hey, hello, good afternoon. I'm Paul DeVitas. I'm a design engineer here at TireSource Global. I've worked for the Pennsylvania Crusher brand for the last 35 years. In that time, I've worked on all of our Crusher product lines, and I have broad knowledge of uh, today's topic, which is Bradford Breakers. So Bradford Breakers. Bradford Breakers have been manufactured by PCC since 1905. As a matter of fact, the first unit that Pennsylvania Crusher ever built was a Bradford Breaker. Over the years, the design of breakers has evolved. Uh, there's two basic styles of breakers. It, one is center mounted, center supported. It's called trunnion mounted breaker. The other is wheel supported called roller mounted breaker. <clears throat> there's also <clears throat> hybrids of uh, breakers that have been developed. There was the Bradford hammer mill style and that led to the development of the Brad Pactor. The Brad Pactor is a design that has increased capacity by simulating a higher height of drop in a compact machine. I'll be getting to that to more on the Brad Pactor a little later. So let's get to uh, what is a Bradford breaker. A breaker is a machine made up of a horizontally mounted cylinder, typically anywhere from 9 feet to 14 feet in diameter. It's mounted on four wheels, two at each end, and it's driven through an electric motor to a gearbox and then through a uh, chain drive. Bradford breakers are used to separate materials while they size coal. They're typically installed in coal mines and power plants. So let's get to how a Bradford breaker works. Coal, rock, and other debris enters the cylinder through a chute at the feed end. The first row of screen plates, uh, in the first row of screen plates, most of the undersized material is screened out. Also in the first row, it's not shown real clearly in this view, but there's, in the first row there's a series of deflectors. They're usually at about a 45 degree angle to the screen plate, and they're there to help separate, uh, spread out the coal as quickly as possible so that you get better screening efficiency. So the oversized material moves down onto the next few rows and is repeatedly lifted and dropped. The coal is shattered by gravity impact and as, as this happens, the underside coal passes through the screen plate openings. The openings are always different depending on the application and depending on the desired output size. To help in sizing the coal, the lifters are adjustable. They can be set in a position to help advance the material further down a cylinder, or they can be in a neutral position, or they can be in a uh, position to help slow down the flow through the breaker. So as this action happens repeatedly, rock, debris, such as wood, metals, and so forth, that resist breaking are moved to the far end of the breaker, and there's a refuse plow at that end of the breaker that removes that material at the far end. So that's an overview of a basic uh, Bradford breaker. This, this picture here, this shows the interior of a 12-foot breaker. This is taken from the side opposite the feed end, you could see the lifters in there. And uh, if you look at the right-hand side of the lifters, let me see, I think I can turn on this pointer. This side of the lifter, you'll notice that it's got a slight angle to it. So this, these lifters are in a position to help promote the material to flow down the, the uh, length of the cylinder. The breaker is is enclosed in a casing uh, typically constructed from quarter inch thick steel. Each section of this casing, each one of these sections here, is four feet long, and that's the same length as each, each screen plate in the breaker. I just want to review uh, the maintenance required on breakers. Uh, compared to other crusher lines, they're, uh, they're very low in maintenance. A typical breaker you have to uh, lubricate the wheels. As I said earlier, uh, the breakers are mounted on four wheels. Each wheel has two pillow block bearings. Here's the wheel, there's a bearing, and there's a bearing on the other side. You have to uh, lubricate the bearings. Each machine has a chain casing. It's shown in orange here. I'm pointing at it here, and then here it is from the front. This is an oil retaining casing, which comes with the breaker. This particular picture here, 
was taken in, uh, this was our first installation over in China. We put this in in 1997. Keep the screen plate, the screen plate bolts tight and everything else in the breaker. You know, you, every once in a while you want to go into the breaker, look around, check the uh, tightness of any of the hardware holding the lifters, deflectors, screen plate, things like that. And of course, when you go in a breaker, when you go in a cylinder, you want to make sure it's locked out and uh, you want to prevent the cylinder from turning. All of our breakers come with an anti-rotation device, which is mounted on the wheel stand. Uh, here's a view of that. It just simply uh, slides over the gusset on the end of the cylinder. Typical things that happen with a breaker. You need to replace this. Uh, periodically, you're going to have to replace screen plate and uh, lifters. Usually what will happen, since the first row of screen plate sees all of the flow, that row will wear out quicker than the other ones. And, and that row, depending on the application, will last anywhere from four or five years. The lifters will last usually around 10 years. Um, it's not unusual, as I was saying, the first row is going to see the majority of the wear, but it's not unusual for the last row to see to last four or five times longer than the first row. So you, you could go 20 years in that last row before you ever have to change a plate. Okay, so everything I've presented so far on the breakers has been on the roller-mounted unit, what we call the RMD. There are other types of uh, breakers. Other styles are the trunnion mounted or what we call a type T, an RT, which is roller mounted on one end and a trunnion mounted on the other, the Brad Pactor, which is a hybrid style of a breaker, and then specialized units for specific applications. So let's talk about, let's talk about a type T or trunnion mounted breaker. The principle of operation of these units is the same as a roller mounted unit, however, it's mounted on each end at a single point at the center of the cones. The cones have arms from the center support to the cylinder. Because these units have arms, the feed size is usually restricted to about 8 or 10 inches. The majority of trunnion mounted breakers that we have out there are in uh, power plants where the coal being delivered is already down to a size that can be handled in, in this, this type of unit. This is, uh, this is a, a picture of a partially assembled cylinder in our shop. You can see on this end right here what I'm pointing at, what I was talking about is the, the arms coming from the center. And because we have these arms coming from the center, we typically, typically refer to these things as spiders. Here's another view of the same... Uh, same cylinder, and then this is a view from inside of the cylinder a little further along. You can see in here also, and you can see the, uh, the arms coming from the center. You can see a deflector here, and you can see some of the lifters in place. Another style of breaker is what we call an RT breaker. This unit is roller mounted at one end and trunnion mounted on the other end. The trunnion mounted side is supported by a single pillow block with a spherical roller bearing. This allows for any misalignment that may occur on a wheel mounted unit. Here's some pictures of the breaker. This is of an RT breaker that we're assembling in our shop. This unit takes advantage of the, the advan uh, takes advantages of um, the roller mounted unit and the trunnion mounted because it has a wide opening at the feed end, but yet it because it's it has a single support at the other end, you don't have any issues with the uh, realignment. Here's another view. In this view, you can see this is a nine foot diameter breaker, and it's one, two, three, four, five screen plates long, each plate being four feet, so this is 20 feet long. This is what we would call a 9 by 20 RT breaker. The Brad Pactor. This is another variation of a breaker. It's, it's a, it operates the same way as a typical breaker. However, it has a rotor going down the center with paddles. Now, a typical breaker turns at around, say, 10 RPM. 
The center rotor on this is adjustable speed, and it turns anywhere from 50 to 100 RPM. The idea behind this is to accelerate the cold downward so as to simulate a higher height of drop. Uh, this increases the capacity in a com compact machine, but you don't want to get the speed of these rotors up too high or it'll also cause the rock to break. We had, uh, we had a particular installation of a Brad Pactor I was lucky enough to be involved in. Um, it was down in Virginia, a company down there, a power plant down there. They had a trunnion-mounted breaker, and uh, it had been operated, operating since the early 40s. And in the mid-80s, they wanted to upgrade it, but they wanted to increase capacity by 50%. So we went in and we uh, suggested going to a Brad Pactor, which they did, and that went into operation in 1987. It's still operating and it's doing very well for us. Sometimes we get applications that require something more than our standard unit with the typical modifications that, the, that we'll make. As an example, we've made uh, breakers that are used in the aluminum industry where the breaker is ran in such a way that the undesirable material goes through the screen plates and the product comes out of the refuse sheet. And then we've also made super heavy duty breakers like the one I'm showing uh, here. This particular unit here, th this is uh, what we referred to as a mega duty breaker. This unit was, uh, or is 14 feet in diameter and 30 feet long. To give you a, a perspective of how heavy duty this unit is compared to a, a standard unit, this, on this side, the left side, that's a wheel from a um, typical 12-foot breaker. This is a wheel from the Mega Duty breaker right here. This wheel for a 12-foot breaker is 30 inches in diameter and 7 inches wide. This wheel is 36 inches in diameter and 18 inches wide. This is a cone. The, the arrow is pointing at uh, the tire. The tire is the surface that the wheels ride on. The cone, this cone is from a 12-foot breaker. That tire is five inches wide and weighs 1,900 pounds. This is the, the um, tire being assembled onto the mega breaker. This tire is 19 inches wide and weighs 16,000 pounds. This is, uh, this is the same picture I had shown earlier of the interior of a 12-foot breaker. The arrows are pointing at the, uh, the lifters. These lifters, as I said earlier, these lifters will last many years. They'll last 10 years. This is the interior of the mega breaker. These lifters, where the arrows are pointing, you can see that they span the whole screen plate. They're mounted front and back. I have another view of the same lifters. You can see on the front edge how, on this one, how it's slanted so as to advance the material down and then in the next row that one's flat so it's in a in what we would call a neutral position the point of this is is that we make a lot of modifications we made all different styles of breakers and and uh, we can suit a lot of different types of applications so to wrap it up we we uh, we make many styles of breakers we've been building them for over 100 years. We make roller mounted type T, arc T, Brad Pactors. We make specialty units. Typical speeds of breakers, they run from uh, this, uh, you know, this says 11 to 14 RPM. However, I know that sometimes we get down to 9 RPM on these. Uh, the larger the diameter, the slower the speed. Typical applications, we can do 8 inch separation at 2,000 tons an hour of 50 hard grow coal which is a rel a relatively soft coal, or we could do two inch separation at 350 tons per hour with 90 hard grow coal, which is a hard coal. Our current standard designs, our current standard is a roller mounted breaker, the smallest being a nine by 16. The first number is the approximate diameter, the 16 or the second number is the length of the screen plate area. The largest unit we've built is a 14 by, or the largest unit in our standard design is a 14 by 32. And in the RT style, we make 9 by 16 through 9 by 24s. 
The largest unit we've ever built is a 16 foot by 30. However, we've made heavier machines, uh, but in smaller diameters than the 16 foot unit. And uh, as always, special applications are always welcome. So I can take any questions that you might have at this time. What test work do you recommend as being good practice for sizing and configuring, uh, such as setting number of lifters, et cetera? What so test work? Yeah. Well, a lot of times when we, if we get an inquiry for a breaker, we'll ask for a material to be sent to us, and we do what we call drop test of the material. And in the, doing the drop test, we come up with what is the best diameter and also the best uh, cylinder length to be used. Um, based on that, we can get very close to what's going to be required, including how to set up the uh, lifters and, uh, and the number of lifters. Once it gets out in the field, it, it usually will require a little bit of adjustment, that being, uh, you know, maybe turning a, a, one of the lifters in a certain different, instead of being in the advanced mode, you may want to put some in the neutral mode and things like that. But there's a lot of adjustability with breakers. Okay, and he also has one other question. How much coal plus dilution is needed for a good sample, and how should that sample be gathered, such as, as a bulk sample or large cores or other? Putting a lot of fines in the material isn't going to help as much because, as I said, the fines are going to be screened out in the first row or two. What you really want to know is how much energy do I have to put into this oversize in order to get it down to size and separate out the rock. So to answer that question, I would say you should, we would be better off if you have the material separated as much as possible so that we have oversized material to do the test. Okay, there's a question up here. It says, what type of lubrication do you recommend for the face of the wheel and the tire of the breaker? That's, that's an interesting question because that's something that does come up. And we recommend that you do not lubricate the face between the wheel and tire for a, a few reasons. Um, the, the primary reason is, is that we found is, is that if you put lubrication in there, material tends to then it gets caught between the wheel and tire face, and it, it causes pitting on the wheels and tires and things like that. Also, uh, because it is chain driven, if you have lubrication, it can, the chain, the way it, it pulls on the cylinder, it can cause it to slip and cause it to get uh, flat spots. We found that you really don't need to lubricate the faces. I have another question. What should be the allowable percent of coal in the reject, and what should be the allowable percent of the reject in the product? Well, as far as the uh, percent of reject in the product, let's say, as an example, you have a breaker and you want a separation at, just say, 6 inch. Well, if, you, if the material being fed into it, if the rock is already below six inch, there's not much we can do about that. That material is going to go down into the product with the coal. However, the oversized material, it, it tends not to break and it'll be rejected. What we have found as far as, to answer the other part of that question, as far as the percent of coal in the reject, is that typically you'll get maybe 2%. About 2%. Now, uh, I'm hesitant to answer that, and, and I'll tell you why. It's because normally you set up a breaker, you run it, and let's say you're getting a lot of coal out the back end. Well, you then go in, you make adjustments to your lifters, and you can cut down on the amount of coal coming going out. But once you get down to about 2%, that's about what would be we would consider to be an acceptable range. I'm going to say 2%. Anything else? Well, if there's no other questions, thank you for joining us today.